This is code.org. Let's see what we got. I'm going to run. <laughs> so if yours doesn't have this stuff, if you don't have this type of code, you need to go back and do the other parts of this lesson. Something's going on with this top paragraph. I'm going to go right to the do this because these instructions look correct. Create at least a new variable to keep track of the changing y position of the fish. Y position of the bubbles. Okay, interesting. So that was weird, but all right, bubbles. Set the value to 400 or another number near the bottom of the grid. Okay, I guess the text. All right, so we need to set bubbles. So we're creating bubbles. This is messed up up here, but we're creating bubbles that slowly rise. So we set the value to 400. 400 Y is way at the bottom, near the bottom of the grid. Use no fill, no fill, stroke, stroke weight, and ellipse to draw at least one bubble. All right. So we need to create a bubble. And I'm going to use drawing. I'm going to use no fill. I'll put it down here above draw sprites. So no fill. And that way it will be over top the fish. If I put it beneath, the bubble would go behind the fish. Which could be fine, but uh, no fill, stroke. Stroke weight. Which I don't have, so I'll skip that. And ellipse. If you want to use stroke weight, you can. You just need to type it in. So I just typed that in to get that to up here. Let's see what goes on now. We have one huge bubble. Okay. So... What do I need? I need it much smaller. Uh, 200, 200 in size, maybe 20 and 20. And they tell us 400 is the bottom of the screen, right? And we need it. Um, anywhere on the bottom, we just need it slowly rise. So I'm going to do 150 for this. Let me see. X, Y, width. Oh, whoops. Okay, so width height for our ellipse is going to be 2020. I'm actually going to get rid of one of these because that's just now 20 for both if we only have one. And the ellipse is going to be at 150X, 400Y. Yeah, it's right there at the bottom. You can barely see it. All right. And the color... Uh, no, fill. We can just leave it without. Whoops. Let's do, I don't know, maybe white. Okay. And stroke weight, that's really heavy, so maybe two. Yeah, I like that. And again, you could also maybe not have stroke weight. I just typed this in. All right. Now we need to... So we need it to slowly rise, just like the fish, except we're not going to be changing, right? Like we did here, we're changing the fish's X value. So each time this runs, it grabs the old, it says, okay, the fish, the orange fish or the blue fish has a new X value. What is it? It's equal to the last X value. Let's say the last one was zero minus three. So the new value is negative three. It hits the bottom of the draw loop, goes back to the top, runs again. Blue fish has a new value. Okay, what is it? It's equal to the old value. Well, we just said it was negative three. So negative three minus three is negative six. Okay, it's new value is negative six. And that's what makes it look like it appears across the screen. So then how can we do that for a bubble? Well, what's controlling the bubble's location? We can't say sprite or ellipse.x, but look, what value is this? This is the ellipse's x value. What value is this? This is the ellipse's y value. So it's asking us to create a variable to track it. So I'm going to go up here and we could do it. I'm going to do it outside the draw loop. And I'm just going to say bubble uh, y. Okay, because it's the bubble's y location. And I'll start this at 400 way down here at the bottom. Now, when I set its y location right here, I'm going to do bubble capital Y because that's how I wrote it and it will still be there right but this isn't changing it why not well because I'm not changing it it's just always 400 
So once again, we can use the counter pattern to do this, right? And so I'm going to go into math here, actually variables, and I'm going to grab an equals. And so at, right before the draw loop each time, or even at the top, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to say, okay, that's cool. The bubbles Y value is now going to be the bubbles Y value is going to be equal to the old value. Grab that old value for the bubble. And we're going to subtract one, just one from it. And so then notice Y up here is zero. Y down here is 400. So if we're subtracting one from bubble Y, it should slowly go up. Now, what's really cool is if you want to do this for multiple bubbles, right? If you want multiple, I'm just going to commit, copy, control C and paste. And maybe I want this at 250. Or maybe I want to get real fancy and even move it to a random location. Boom. Okay. Bubble Y is going to move both bubbles. I could even say bubble Y and always do plus five. So they're never really at the same spot. It's hard to see now. Or plus 15. And so they'll always be a little bit different like a bubble would be. Plus 35. pretty cool and we can do however many bubbles we want i'm going to do one more and i'm going to give it a random element to it i'm going to make its x location between 0 and 400x and now instead of plus 35 i'm actually let me go into text here going to go minus minus 25 boom okay let's give that a shot Oh, that was a bad idea because it's going to change constantly. So if I wanted to do this, <laughs> I only want random to run once. That's what I get for being complicated. Bubble X, and I'm not going to use this on all of them because then they would all, all be at the same random location. So I'm just going to use this on one bubble, but then bubble X. All right, so now I can go down here. And since I did it above, it will only grab a random number once, and it's going to randomly move that bubble. Around. Pretty cool. Onward.